Hey everybody, this is Dr. Jones, the uh, CEO and founder of Colorado Medical Solutions. And today we're gonna talk about hormones and we're gonna talk about why you should do hormonal optimization that can have a huge impact potentially to uh, improve the quality of your life on so many levels. If you're watching this, you probably have already reached out to us, uh, inquired, maybe scheduled a consultation, uh, or at least you're thinking about it and you were told to watch this webinar. We want you to watch this webinar because we don't want to waste your time and I'm sure you don't want to waste our time either. Um, and uh, this webinar is going to educate you and give you a good understanding of not only what we are all about, but also uh, what this therapy can do for you. That way when you move forward uh, in the process with us, you can be more informed and uh, really come in with uh, more questions answered. And a lot of times patients watch this webinar and they're just ready to go. So I'm the CEO again and founder and uh, the clinic director of our clinics here. We are in Denver and Colorado Springs. And what my role is, I'm, I'm a chiropractor by trait. And what my role is, is I hire the right medical staff to uh, provide these amazing therapies like hormonal optimization. Uh, we do so many more things though. And, and they all feed our purpose. They all feed our mission, which is restoring optimal health. We restore optimal health by reducing prescriptions and preventing surgeries when possible. So I'm, I'm so excited, let's just go ahead and get right into it, guys. So first thing to talk about is endocrine disruptors. Well, what is our endocrine system? Our endocrine system is our system of glands that produce hormones in our body. And endocrine disruptors are chemicals, are things that disrupt our endocrine system's ability to function and, and function properly. And there's, believe me, this is not an exhaustive list by any means. There are so many things out there, but these are some of the main categories. And uh, I'm just gonna kind of give you a little quick little uh, education on each one. So pesticides, you probably have seen a much uh, more aggressive movement towards organic produce. And, and there's, there's a reason, it's not just marketing. I eat all organic produce and recommend that you can when possible, or at least be aware of the dirty dozen, which are the vegetables that are more absorbent potentially of uh, pesticides. The reason why pesticides are becoming a bigger issue is because as, as we know, insects become resistant to pesticides and therefore, you know, that's a little process called evolution and therefore they have to make pesticides stronger. And here we are eating the produce, which is covered in the pesticides that are now getting stronger, hence the issues. BPAs, I was just reading an article that BPAs are um, uh, not just in plastic, but in so many sources. BPAs are horrible um, and uh, they, they, they have really negative consequences to our endocrine system. Uh, avoid plastics at all when possible. We use all glass coverware, all stainless steel jars. Uh, if you are gonna drink a bottle of water, that's fine. Just do not reuse the plastic. And you know, I remember growing up myself, and, and we we use plastic, and, and and I cannot stress how bad that is. Uh, fluorides. Uh, interesting about fluoride is you're not getting it as much in your water as you may think, but it's interesting because there there are a lot of different potential exposures to fluorides. Kids get it from from consuming toothpaste, eating too much toothpaste on accident when they brush their mouth. So we gotta avoid those uh, at all costs uh, when possible. Uh, harmful chemicals, cleaning products, the air we breathe, uh, the food that we eat is just riddled with chemicals. And you think about cleaning, for example, you breathe in the fumes of the stuff that you're spraying. So when, all, when at all possible, try to use more organic and natural cleaners in your house. Uh, soy is interesting because what soy does is it changes the pathways at which your body is handling the hormones. So for men, they tend to estrogenize and women, they tend to go down the bad estrogen pathway. So we, we really want to avoid soy when at all possible uh, for most people. And of course, radiation, we're being exposed, you know, don't stand near the microwave, believe it or not. There's uh, um, an idea that that's uh, uh, exposed you to more radiation potentially uh, on your flights when you get scanned at the airport. And then the last one is dirty electricity. Uh, Wi-Fi signals, Bluetooth signals, and then the 5G cell phone signals. Go watch that 5G apocalypse documentary. It's, it's uh, you know, whether all of that's true or not. I mean, even if half of it's true, I'm, I'm terrified. I mean, this is, 
You know, you can't walk down the street or into a big building without being bombarded with Wi-Fi's, Bluetooth's, and, and cell phone signals that are getting stronger. So no matter how healthy of a lifestyle you live, no matter how hard you try, you cannot avoid these things. And um, our endocrine systems are, are, are being affected. There's so much research out there right now, observations at least right now, that men's testosterone levels are dropping. These are some of the reasons why. Look at the acceptable versus optimal. This is this is fascinating to me because when you go to your medical doctor and talk about hormones, they just want you to be acceptable. But in our clinic, we want you to be optimal, and there's a big difference. Look at the men's total testosterone. Um, acceptable, one reference range is 250 to 1100, but optimal is 1000 to 1200. Now, really optimal is when you feel your best, when you feel at you, uh, the way you used to feel at your prime when you were younger, most men tend to fill out their prime between 1,000 and 1,200, sometimes even higher. And look at women, the same thing applies. Two to 45 is what they say is okay, yet our women tend to feel best when they're upwards to 150 to 250. So there's a big discrepancy between you being clinically low versus you being suboptimal, which is that middle range before you get to the optimal range. And, and, and we get patients that are way here clinically low but the majority of our patients come in where they're not clinically low and their doctor wants to prescribe them uh, various prescriptions to deal with the symptoms that are probably related to just not having optimal levels of hormones in their body. So LabCorp, uh, one of the biggest labs uh, in the world, uh, their reference ranges, if you look it, back in history, um, tells a story, tells us that there is a trend going on. The reference range used to be 348 to 1197. 20 years prior, it used to be somewhere around 5, 600, all the way up to 1500. The most recent change they just did was 264 down to 916. Well, what's, what, what's going on here? That range is not what is meant to be for the person, although doctors use it that way. That reference range is a standard deviation comparing you to what everybody else in your area for the same age and gender have of this level. Well, again, we treat that in most cases like what we're supposed to have because that is the case in most cases. But here's an example of when that's an inaccurate uh, conclusion to draw because everyone's testosterone levels is plummeting. If you look at the median scores that we showed you on the last chart, I'm gonna go back to that real quick. You can see these median scores dropping as, we, as, as time has passed, as decades have passed. So we can't use those reference ranges that are being used currently in the medical community. The normal range is found through purely statistical means. It has absolutely nothing to do with health and happiness. That's that, uh, Dr. John Chrysler, one of our mentors. Um, and uh, it really brings a, um, an important note to understand. So at Colorado Medical Solutions with our exclusive therapy, we restore your depleted hormone levels back to when you were in your prime, when you were in your teenage years and your, in your early 20s. With optimized hormone levels, you may live and experience life with a renewed feeling of youth and vitality. That's because these hormones are responsible for a plethora of different processes in the body and they make you feel good, which is why generally speaking, people felt better when they were younger because they had a higher level of hormones and allowing you to potentially enjoy the limitless possible health benefits and impact that this therapy may make in your lives and relationships. And we have story after story of relationships that were saved for many reasons due to, due to um, uh, starting this therapy. Our patients choose us because we're experts in the industry uh, when it comes to treating patients successfully. We optimize your hormone levels to that of your prime. We diagnose and customize a program for each individual. And of course, our program is medically supervised. Again, my role in the clinic is putting together the, the right medical staff that have the know-how to be able to administer this therapy. So a little bit about um, the corruption that exists right now in, in the healthcare community. I mean, it's... Um, it's, uh, it's frustrating for, for anybody to be told insurance companies don't cover this. And, you know, the problem is the pharmaceutical companies pretty much run the healthcare system. They got the pharmaceutical companies, they got um, the FDA in their back pocket. And so due to heavy financial interest, um, the FDA and healthcare insurance companies are um, a little skewed in, in, in what maybe the FDA is going to approve or what the pharmaceutical company or what the insurance companies are going to cover. 
Um, it's, it's unfortunate, but it is the reality of why there's such an attack and there's such a suppression on not just hormonal optimization, but, but holistic therapies. History shows us a constant attack and suppression. Google now, which is actually paired up with uh, one, one of the bigger pharmaceutical companies, is now removing from their search result algorithms that produce the search results, um, holistic options. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, talk about freedom of speech in this country, but so what is a hormone? You can think of a hormone as a, a chemical. It's a thing that floats around in your bloodstream and your body, your cells, your organs, your tissues, they have receptor sites for these things, for these chemicals, and they make you feel good. They cause various physiological processes, things that go, go on in your body um, to happen. And as you get older, your hormones deplete, and therefore those processes don't happen as effectively as well. You don't recover as well. You don't have the energy. You don't have the muscle mass. You don't have the strength, the vitality. The list goes on. So the sex hormones, which are the big hormones that we optimize, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone for women, uh, for men, we are looking at all three of those as well, but mostly the testosterone is the main one that we're going, we're going to optimize, making sure your estrogen doesn't get too high. But this right here is the medical definition of, of what most doctors would agree that after 30 or so, you get a depletion of 1% to 2% of your levels per year. But that's so incorrect in, in the real world because we get patients all the time. Because according to this, you would still be relatively okay well into your 40s. But we see patients that come in all the time in young 30s. I myself started in my young 30s because, which is where I'm at now, um, because uh, I wanted to be optimal. See, this, and we're going to talk about this. This goes so much farther beyond just feeling good. But this really has to do with health benefits that come with having optimal levels. So menopause is defined medically as a year going by where there's no period or partial period. Andropause is not really medically recognized, but it's still a real condition and it's still a depletion of sex hormones in males too as well. It affects their emotions, their mental health, their physical health. Um, prominent effects from uh, perimenopause, which is prior and, and, and menopause. Those hot flashes and night sweats can kill some women, literally. And, uh, you know, poor women are running their, their ACs on full blast, still sweating, and their husbands are complaining <laughs> about how cold they are. And it's kind of like the opposite because prior to menopause, you know, men tend to run hotter because they have more testosterone. And so they usually, it's the other way around. I know my fiance complains of how cold it is and I'm sitting there with my shirt off because it's, because it's hot. And uh, that switches when the night sweats happen. And, and generally it's, 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 uh, we give them some estrogen and, and they're feeling great again and the night sweats and, and hot flashes subside. So um, these symptoms can be potentially treated with just a replacing the natural hormones. So I'm not gonna read all these different symptoms, but I like these next two slides because they give you some color coordination related to the symptom uh, that might be benefited, that might be improved with administration of the hormones. So blue is testosterone, pink is estrogen, and uh, green is progesterone. Just look at all these different symptoms that are affected and may be improved with administration of this therapy. So. It's, it's broad sweeping, far sweeping, what this therapy can do. So what is, why isn't my doctor talking about this? Why doesn't he want to do it? Why is he negative about it? Why does he recommend against it? Well, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot behind that, unfortunately. And some of the key points is, again, there's a lot of suppression from the pharmaceutical companies. They can't patent uh, these natural hormones, uh, so they, they suppress it, unfortunately. And that trickles down to the way, the way the doctors are even educated in medical schools. Um, so they come out of medical school indoctrinated, so to speak, into this way to think uh, of symptom-based, prescription-based healthcare, um, and not focused on uh, preventative. So we see this happen all the time. Mood issues, um, anxiety, depression, and our patients report to us that you know they they don't they don't feel like they want to take their their medications anymore. Now for us, we never advise anybody to 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 do that without uh, working with your PCP. And, uh, but either way, I know that for me, if I felt better, I, I wouldn't want to be on those antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications. I'd be working with my PCP too as well to help get off those because, um, a lot of times, again, replacing those hormones, we see patients, uh, stabilize their mood improves dramatically. 
testosterone is not just a male hormone. We find ourselves over the last couple of years specializing in women. Um, you ever notice that you look at the advertisements for the hormonal optimization, it's all geared towards men, right? ED, low T, and, and, and it kind of sucks for women out there who, who suffer with these issues. Um, and, uh, you know, our, our, our clinicians love dealing with women. Um, and uh, man, the, the changes that we can get in them are, are, um, are amazing. And, uh, you know, women are trickier. You know, it's a much more complex system to deal with. It's more uh, finicky and requires some more precise monitoring. And uh, our clinicians are up to the task. And uh, I, I think we do a really good job dealing and, and with our women. And testosterone, man, it, it, it can be a game changer for our women. When, when they come in, they don't have any testosterone. And it, 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 the, all the cases that we've seen. So all of us inevitably will lose our sex hormones. We know that. Um, and when we do, it's those symptoms that manifest that cause issues that affect the quality of our life, right? And they get worse over time. So this is why we need to do something about it. According to the FDA, a minimum normal total testosterone level is 300. So strictly interpreted, that would mean a man that has a level of 299 is, is diagnosed clinically low or hypogonadism, while a man with a level of 301 is normal. That is simply not a sensible approach. Uh, because it's <laughs> a guy at 350 is going to function, a little total testosterone is going to function very differently than someone at 600 and very differently than somebody at 900 or, or even 1200. So um, these various societies are looking at this in almost an archaic manner um, and, and need to be more aware of these trends that are happening in terms of the levels of testosterone that we talked about earlier dropping. These are just some of the complications of low testosterone. I mean, decreased muscle strength, abdominal fat, quality of life decreases, cognition goes, sexual function, body composition, it goes on and on and on. So there is a ton of data of clinical research out there um, supporting this, um, this therapy. And uh, you know, the, the reality is, is it's, you're not gonna find a ton of the double blind, randomized controlled, cohort studies, the highest level of research because that research is the most expensive. And this, and this happens to all holistic medical procedures. There, there, there's a pattern here. Pharmaceutical companies are the only one that has the kind of money to fund research and they're only gonna, they're only gonna fund research of, of things that make the money. And it's unfortunate. And uh, the Women's Initiative trial is something that is um, uh, really manifest and shows just what they do. But my point here is, is there's, there's data out there um, and there's thousands of practitioners across the country that do this therapy. So um, a very common issue that arises uh, in a person or a relationship is low sex drive or no sex drive. And while sex drive is just as much mental and emotional as it is physical, the physical component is necessary as well as everything else. And so if you're struggling emotionally, if you're struggling mentally, having that physical drive, AKA being horny and wanting to have sex with your love, with your partner, um, will improve mood, will improve the relationships. A good, healthy sex life is necessary for an optimal relationship. An optimal health too as well. Erectile dysfunction is very, very common and what they do in the medical community is they prescribe Viagra um, or Cialis and, and those have horrible side effects for men and a lot of them don't wanna do that or, or even worse, they're doing that and they're still not able to maintain erection or even get an erection in extreme cases. So uh, with administration of testosterone, these muscles and nerves that were atrophied return nearly to 100%. Um, it's, you gotta do the work. Testosterone just doesn't magically transform your body uh, you still got to eat better. You still got to work out. And we stress that and, 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 um, and really make that apparent. But testosterone is like fuel in a car. And when you put fuel in it, it goes. And what happens for a lot of us when they're coming in is they're, they're, they're running on empty. And the, and the body's trying to make it go right. And it will, but at the, at the, at the expense of the quality of your life. So weight gain is a, is a common thing that uh, uh, is a concern for women, for example. Um, and uh, generally speaking, we find that people tend to lose weight when they get on testosterone. And, and really optimizing their hormones. The big one is thyroid too as well, because we optimize your thyroid. 
So the 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 reason why um, is because there's an association with an increase in the burning of fat. When you have a higher level of testosterone, you build more muscle mass, and that's going to burn more fat. Now, uh, it's interesting to understand though. Virtually every obese patient that you find out there is low on testosterone. So you would think the ideal thing is to get on testosterone and you will lose weight. It definitely is going to help, but again, I gotta stress that you gotta do the work. Now, it's in the work being the diet and the exercise. It's important to understand though that some people will gain weight. If you are working out and resistance training, men or women building muscle mass, I cannot stress how beneficial muscle mass is. It's not just an aesthetic thing. It's not just a function thing, but there is some solid research that shows a strong correlation between muscle mass and how long you live. That's how powerful muscle mass is. It's not just an aesthetic thing again and a function thing. So, um, but if you're not reducing your intake of calories and you're working out, which will increase your appetite too as well, you're going to build muscle and the scale is going to go up. But if you can combine the, the increase in energy and the desire to eat more because you're working out with healthier choices, that's that scenario where you can get a favorable body composition change um, and not have the weight go up. So, so just understand that. And women too as well can get bloated. That's a quick fix. We gotta, we gotta continue to adjust your, your doses. And women, remember, you're trickier. You're harder to get to that sweet spot. Um, so there are phases where you might be a little more bloated. Uh, men or women, you just talk to our practitioners throughout this program so we can better adjust your doses because we adjust just as much off of your symptoms as we do off of your actual blood levels. So estrogen in a woman is, is the sensuality. Estrogen is what makes a woman a woman. And it is so important to have this um, for the function of everything, their, their sexual components, their parts, their skin. Their, I mean, estrogen is, is, is very, very powerful. Um, but it needs to be balanced out with progesterone. I see clinics all the time where they're putting women on estrogen to take care of the hot flashes and night sweats, but they, they don't even address the progesterone. And there is research that shows when estrogen is too high, not in balance with progesterone where issues can arise. But you think of progesterone as your calming, your anti-anxiety, your sleep pill. This is nature sleep pill is what we call it because it helps with sleep so beautifully. And we balance it as well when we, when we put you on estrogen, if you're needed. Some women come in, they just need testosterone and progesterone. Everybody's different. <laughs> I hope you can look at this and laugh. The seven menopausal dwarfs um, it, it's a, it's a real thing. Uh, and men too, as well, the seven andropausal dwarfs. Um, some of you might be thinking, oh, that's, that's my husband or that's my wife. Well, let's, let's get them in here and let's, let, let's make an impact on their life. So what does bioidentical mean? You, you may, if you, if you've looked into this, you may have heard that bioidentical natural hormones are safe. And, and, you know, that's the argument that a lot of clinics make in favor of bioidenticals versus synthetic. Well, what does it actually mean? It's, it's a plant-based hormone. It's made from plants that are, that are molecularly and chemically altered so that the end result is the hormone, the chemical, that is identical to the hormones into our body. So just kind of logically looking at that, it makes sense while it's got, why it's got less side effects. You know, prescriptions in general have side effects because they're chemicals that are foreign to the body. Well, when we put something into the body that's not foreign, and it's identical, it tends to have less side effects. It has the effect of whatever system it's acting on, whatever receptor sites the, the particular compound you're putting in is, is, is acting on. So what does synthetic mean? Well, it's a bit of a misnomer to call the, the, the ones that aren't identical synthetic because they're all made, so they're all synthetic. But what, what we're talking about really here is the bioidentical versus the non-bioidentical. And it appears that the more altered the hormones are, meaning the farther from the identical ones that they are, we tend to find issues. And, and I think that's why in the Women's Initiative trial, which was the biggest study done on those synthetic estrogens, Prempro and Primarin, the synthetic progesterones, why they found issues with cancer and ovarian cancer and breast cancer and blood clots. I mean, it, it, it was a scary study and unfortunately got some negative interpretation of the results, um, thinking that all hormones are bad. Well, I understand how initially you can think that, but when you look at the research done on the natural plant-based hormones, it tells a different story. So you gotta take that into consideration too as well. So we have many options in um, uh, our clinic to administer hormones. So 
the most common uh, method that our, that our patients go for is a pellet. And a pellet is a uh, little bean-sized pellet that's placed underneath the skin, slowly allows the body to absorb the hormones. And um, uh, every three to four months, the patient comes in and gets a new pellet. So this tends to be the most popular because of the convenience factor. Um, but the reality is all the hormones will all the different methods will get your hormone levels to the optimal level. It's just a matter of, of what makes most sense for you. What's the most convenient? What are you going to stick to? Because patient adherence is the most important. So we have orals that you can take, either either pills or, or trochies or dissolvable tablets. We have creams that you can apply. And then, of course, there's injections. And so when you have your consultation with the medical staff, you'll discuss these various things um, and decide which, which option works best. Or when you have a, con uh, a, a conversation with our staff, you might already know what method you wanna go with, and, th and that's fine. In most cases, you can choose your, your, um, your desired method. So cancer gets brought up a lot. And while we can't yet say conclusively, <laughs> based off research, that this is, these hormones are gonna cause cancer, um, but again, there's thousands of clinicians prescribing this across the country. So you got to understand what we believe versus what we can back up with the big research. Here's a study that we can use to, to make us feel a little bit more comfortable. This was a 10 year study, uh, 976 women on natural hormone therapies. And, and there was basically no, no cases of, of cancer. There was one case that happened and due to the timing of that case, it, it, it was concluded that it wasn't related to the, to the natural hormone therapy. So, um, we can, we can look at this study and, and begin to feel more confident and as well as the anecdotal um, um, amount of information that's out there and the thousands of practitioners that are providing this therapy for their patients because it makes such, a, such an impact in their life. So the problems with the synthetics like we talked about, they're, they're not natural, right? They're chemicals that have an effect in the body because they can fit in the receptor site. The receptor site is a thing let's say on the heart, here's your heart, here's a receptor site, the hormone goes by, attaches to the receptor site, and it causes an action, it causes something to happen. Well, these, these, for example, these synthetic estrogens, Prempro and Primarin, the synthetic progesterones, they have side effects, and we talked about how devastating those side effects were, because they're, they don't really fit into the receptor site the exact same way. So you might even be missing out on some of the other natural benefits that the natural hormones can do too as well. So it's, it's, it's nasty stuff and, and we really advise most patients to be off of these synthetics. Um, and a lot of our patients that get on naturals do, if they are on synthetics, end up getting off of them. So this is not, it's, it's not regulated by the FDA. It's important to understand that the FDA has no jurisdiction when it comes to compounded hormones. It's all to the individual state pharmaceutical, uh, the pharmacy boards. And of course, our, our therapies do meet the standards um, set uh, by the PCAB. So um, no FDA involvement, although they are trying to step in and they are trying to regulate it. And if it was up to them, they've, they've had discussions of removing this therapy. And, and so we hope, we hope that never happens. And there's definitely a lot of people fighting for this therapy out there. So we aim to address and treat the cause not just address the symptoms. And that's important to understand because a lot of the symptoms that you're dealing with while you you watching this webinar right now are related to deficiencies and, and lower amounts of these hormones in your body. Um, we have a very high success rate. So initially what we'll do is we'll do a blood panel. Um, you know, these are just some of the things that we're gonna test. It's a little bit case by case, um, but these are some of the more standard um, lab values that we're gonna check. We talked about this earlier, the pellet procedure. It's a very common uh, procedure done in our office uh, for the, uh, the convenience factor, because you don't have to worry about it uh, only a couple times a year. You have to get the procedure done. So bio-natural hormones are considered safe. They do not carry the same risks associated with synthetic hormones. No Colorado Medical Solutions patient has developed any of the following uh, symptoms secondary uh, to treatments, um, as opposed to the synthetic versions, which we know causes these symptoms. So. Um, you know, we can feel comfortable uh, with these therapies. Many of our patients uh, have reported 
working with our PCP and getting off of various prescriptions, diabetic medications, other oral synthetic hormones, blood pressures improving, bone density improving, um, cholesterols decreasing. We actually will monitor your cholesterol and show you how it decreases over the course of a year. Um, it's pretty amazing stuff to see what the optimal levels of hormones, what kind of positive impact it can have on your blood chemistry. My energy is so much better. I can finally get good nights of sleep. I feel like exercise and again, my hot flashes are better. My friends comment on how much better my deposition is. And that's, I, I love that one because, um, excuse me, disposition, uh, because what that is, is you, you glow, you radiate better when you have optimal levels of hormones on your body, in your body. And uh, that takes more time and it's subtle. And the people around you are the ones that are gonna notice that better but I, we cannot stress enough how amazing and potentially life-changing this therapy can be. These are just some of the stories that we've had from our various patients, and um, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty powerful what these patients here, um, and what people from um, not just our clinic, but clinics all across the country um, are saying about this therapy. So what does our program include? One of the reasons why we're different is uh, we, are much more comprehensive with our program. Uh, a lot of clinics might just address the, the standard for a man, here's your testosterone, here's some Arimidex to block the estrogen, you're good to go. And I mean, that's, that's horrible. With women, here's some estrogen, uh, maybe some progesterone, they don't even talk about thyroid. So our program um, is, is going to include all the consultation that you need, all the blood panels that you're gonna need, um, all the testosterone and estrogen that you're gonna need, um, and then we're gonna manage your other hormones too as well, because you may or may not need them. Progesterone, thyroid. Um, a lot of our patients, we end up putting them on a natural desiccated thyroid product because none of the sex hormones are gonna have an impact if your thyroid isn't optimized. And it's a crazy statistic, but probably 10 to 20% of the patients that come in have thyroid antibodies, meaning they have an autoimmune disease. And so that's something that never gets caught by their PCP. And it's, a, it's unfortunate, and we have protocols in place that we can do to, to, to maybe help with that. Um, additionally, as well, we're going to look and manage your other symptoms, too, as well. Systems. We're going to check your inflammation, your vitamin D. We're going to check for metabolic syndrome, a.k.a. pre-pre-diabetes. Catch it early so that you can see well before you get to that pre-diabetic state that you were down that path. Because you can see it on your bloodstream, in your blood work. And it should prompt you to make some life changes because you don't want to wait till you're medically pre-diabetic. And then they put you on metformin, which, you know, metformin may be a great drug, but you got to make those lifestyle changes. And uh, we're going to help you with those. So bio-natural hormone therapy replacement is, is considered safe uh, by thousands of physicians across the country. Um, and uh, I hope that at this point you're educated and empowered uh, to make the next decision to at least move forward in this process so that you can decide if this is something that you want to move forward with. So what now? Well, the process looks like this. You come into the clinic, we uh, sit down and go over your symptoms and establish a possible hormonal deficiency. Then we do your blood work right in the clinic. We'll bring you back in for a second consultation where we'll go over your lab value so that you can see where you're at with your hormone levels. And then together we'll figure out which which program might make the most amount of sense if this is the path that you'd like to take. If you already have a consultation scheduled, great. We'll see you when you come in. If you don't, then please call the numbers to the left and we'll get you set up. Now, maybe you just wanna move faster through this process and you're ready to do your blood work now. Maybe you want one consult instead of two. I totally understand. If that's the case, I want you to call Jonathan directly and he'll actually get you set up so that you can order your blood panel uh, when you do your blood panel, you can come into the clinic or you can uh, go to LabCorp. I know for our downtown Denver patients, they, they prefer to go to LabCorp and don't like to come to downtown Denver as often. So that's definitely an option for you there too as well. So call Jonathan directly at his number here, area code 949, and uh, we'll get you set up with that. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the clinic.